Yes, this is Dr. Manning. Who? Didn't you try to get your own doctor? I see. Well, there's her last attack. Very well, you better give me your address. Yes. Yes. Now, just keep her quiet. I'll be right over. Darling, do you have to? A cardiac case. Some poor fellow's wife said he couldn't get his own doctor. You're too good-natured. Oh, I don't know. All in the day is work, you know. Sometimes I wish I wasn't in the phone book, though. But you've got an operation at 8 o'clock. You won't get any sleep. I'm used to that event. You ought to know by now. Uh, how can you be so cheerful at this ungodly hour? If I didn't love you so much, I'd hate you for it. Nice to know how lucky I am. Good night, Mrs. Manning. Don't wait to sleep. Good night, darling. And don't use up too much bedside manner. <laughs> Put me through to Dr. Manning, Mary. This is Mrs. Manning. There's nobody there yet, Mrs. Manning. The doctor hasn't come in. Oh? Well, will you ask him to ring me as soon as he does? Certainly, Mrs. Manning. I don't think he at the hospital this morning. Of course, I... I forgot. Thank you, Mary. Hello? Is that the hospital? Is Dr. Manning there? just phoned. She said he had a night call and he hasn't come back yet. I see. Call Dr. Turnbull. We can't wait any longer. I do wish you could, Gil. You'll be along right away then. Five minutes? Thank you, Gil. I'm getting rather worried about it. Why don't we call the police? Do you think we should? Oh, if there's been an accident, they can easily check. No. No, let's wait a little while. George always hates a fuss, and maybe. But I am worried. He's never been away as long as this without calling me first. Never missed an operation before. 
Well, maybe he had to stay with the patient a long time and there was no phone. All the same, I wish he'd called. Look, try to stop worrying, dear. George is the most dependable man in the world and the most considerate. I ought to know. I'm his lawyer. Tell you what we'll do. Hello? No, Mrs. Fletcher, the doctor isn't in. No, he's not at his surgery either. Yes, I'll tell him. Goodbye. Good patient. Then I'm being a very bad hostess. Wouldn't you like some coffee? No, thank you. You just sit down and relax. We'll wait another half hour and then I'll call the police. I've just found it, sir. Lying there. Thank you. That's all. It's addressed to you. Whoever left it, he must have gone by now. This stamp delivered by hand. Call the police at once. No, Gil. Gil, you mustn't. The letter said we mustn't. Gil, Gil, what can we do? Just help me. I can't, my dear, not alone. This is a matter for Scotland Yard. But if we go to the police, they might kill him. Surely there must be some other way. There's just a chance I might be able to catch him. Catch whom? His name's Nick Logan. He's an American detective. Just finished a case over here from an American company. Insurance fraud. Oh, hello. Mr. Logan, please. Urgent. What? He's already left for the airport. Thank you. But, but how can an insurance detective... Logan was with the OSS during the war, and he's worked with the FBI. I got to know him pretty well. Maybe I'll be able to persuade him. Is Logan. Somebody want me? Urgent phone call for you, Mr. Logan. Right here. Thank you. Nick Logan speaking. Who? Oh, hello, Gil. How are you? What? Well, I'm taking off in ten minutes. Well, no. No, I couldn't. I'm doing New York tomorrow. Look. Perhaps Mrs. Manning would like to speak to you herself. Maybe she could persuade you. I'll talk to her, but that's all. Mr. Logan, I know it's a great deal to ask, but I'm desperate. Why don't you postpone your trip for just the day? Please help me. Just 24 hours. You will? Oh, thank you, Mr. Logan. Yes, I'll give you the address. You know, honey, England is a very lovely country. It's kind of hard to leave with pretty girls like you around. So will you give my regards to the pilot and tell him not to wait for me? Huh? Yes, it's a kidnap note, all right. But it looks like an amateur. What makes you think that? A professional would have kept you on the hook longer. A bigger... Mr. Logan, what can we do? Mrs. Manning, there are two things we've got to get straight. Won't you sit down? <laughs> no, I'm the pacer type, you know. I'd like to ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. No, not at all. How long have you been married? Five years. The doc, does he take trips? Is he often out of town? Not particularly. We go on a holiday to the continent or attend a medical congress. Most together? Mostly. Did you notice any strain? Any... Overwork or anything like that? No, he was joking when he left the house this morning. His patients are mostly wealthy, aren't they? Yes, mostly. But he does a lot of free work, too. These patients, the rich ones... Women do get sick, too. Did he receive many late-night calls? Oh, please, Nick. Mrs. Manning's under enough strain. It's all right, Gil. 
Your hunch about rich women patients is quite correct. But I never asked my husband anything about them. We were very happy together. There was never any other woman or any other man. I know one thing about your husband, Mrs. Manning. He's a very lucky guy. Thank you. Well, that cleans that up. Now, the second thing. We must go to the police. But you read the letter. It said we mustn't. Mrs. Manning, that's exactly what the kidnappers want you to do. Not to go to the police. But the only chance to get your husband back alive is to use the facilities of Scotland Yard. But what if... Now, I can't run this as a one-man show. I need help. I have a friend at the Yard, Inspector Brown. And with your permission, I'd like to contact him. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Well, Nick, you're quite satisfied that this is a straightforward case of kidnapping, huh? Looks like me. All right, we have put the car on a 48-hour list. Then if it's left anywhere in the open, it'll be found. By the way, what's the doctor look like? Well, he's... I've got a description here. I promised Mrs. Manning we'd try and keep the thing quiet for the time being. Oh. Yes, well, I agree with Mrs. Manning. And it's okay if I stick around? Oh, sure. All for a little bit of Anglo-American cooperation. Nice to have you again. Thanks. Uh, that Humber car's already been reported, sir. Looks like Dr. Manning's all right. Thank you. You heard? Yeah. Something interesting? Not yet, sir. Who found it? Man on the beat about half an hour ago. He saw it first about eight o'clock in the morning. Thought it was just another parked car. All right, keep at it with him. Well, there's nothing more for us to do until they're through with the job. I better get back to Mrs. Manning. You want to come along? No, it'll only make her feel worse. You find me from there if there's anything new, will you? Okay. I'll put on a couple of men down there. Not in uniform, Inspector. You leave that to me. Hello, Fred. I'm terribly sorry. You're a little late for a lunch date, aren't you? Three o'clock. I couldn't help it. We started at ten instead of eight. What happened? Patient gone on strike? No, but there's been a lot of excitement here this morning. Dr. Manning didn't turn up. It's the first time it's ever happened. And nobody knows where he is. Manning? George Manning? The surgeon who married all that money with a Mayfair accent? Well, don't tell me he's taken a powder on her. Spoken like a true reporter. What a... No, that's what makes me so attractive to women. Come on, Anne. Let's get a bite to eat. I want to know more about that, Doctor. Hello? Oh, Missing Persons Bureau? Can I speak to Sergeant O'Hara, please? Oh, uh, Mike? It's Fred Barnes. Look, have you got a Dr. Manning on your list? Okay, I'll hold on. Hello? You haven't? Look, are you sure? No, no, just a hunch, that's all. Okay, Mike. Thanks. There's nothing here except bills and letters. We better go through the stuff in the office. Uh, Gilbert Stevens speaking. Mr. Stevens, how much ransom do they want for Dr. Manning? How do you know? Who are you? Thank you, Mr. Stevens. <laughs> I tried. Kidnapping is not a very private affair. But it might spoil everything. It's been more than 24 hours since I got that note and nothing since... Uh... This won't stop the kidnappers. It'll only make them greedier. And a greedy man is usually careless, too eager. Besides, it may bring forward some witnesses. Make it sound so ordinary, so reasonable. When I think of George, he might... Try and be calm, Mrs. Manning. We're doing our best. So sorry, I'm so tired, so confused. I understand. Uh, 
Hey, just a minute. Where do you think you're going? I have a message for Mrs. Manning. Who from? I must see her immediately. It is vital. Is it about Dr. Manning? My message is for her alone. All right. Come in. Man says he's got a message from Mrs. Manning. What sort of a message? A note? No. It is a personal message from Mrs. Manning. Hand it out. Uh-huh. All right, I'll tell Mr. Logan. Wait here. Are you sure, Mrs. Manning, your husband didn't know the person who phoned? No. I heard George ask him why he didn't call his own doctor. And what did he say to that, Mrs. Manning? Would any of Dr. Manning's patients have any reason to harm him? An unsuccessful operation, maybe. Or a relative looking for revenge. Has he had any threatening letters? Who had any demands for money, Mrs. Manning? Look, gentlemen, I don't think all money. Well, give it. Is it about my husband? I am here to speak to Mrs. Men. Oh, Mr. Stevens is her lawyer. I'm a friend of the family. Whatever you have to say, they can hear. Only say it, whatever it is. Now, come on, fellas. Give us a break, please. Now, sir. Pitiless in anger and in wrath. Come on. Lear, Tesla, get him out of here. I'm sorry, Mrs. Manning, I should have warned you. And I'm afraid this is only the beginning. Crazy people. Well, yes, Mrs. Manning is here, but can't you tell me? I'm her lawyer. Just a moment. A woman. Says she has some information, but won't talk to me. Hello? This is Mrs. Manning. Do you want to know where your husband's got to? Oh, yes, please. Well, I can tell you, dearie. They're all the same. He's gone off with a bit of skirt half your age, like my husband did. And he won't come back either. <laughs> How cruel. If they only knew what they were doing. Mrs. Manning, I think you ought to have the police in the house. It'd save you a lot of trouble. But how can they do that? Let's well, set up a post here, open up the mail, answer the telephone. Keep this sort of thing away from you. Well, it's up to you to decide. I want my husband back, Mr. Logan. Here's someone who claims that they saw him in Brighton on the day he was kidnapped. Everybody wants to get in on the act. Here's someone we'd better follow up, Nick. Says that he saw the doctor getting out of his car. Here's the one we've been waiting for. For my money, the doctor's already dead. And we're tracking down a murderer. Well, let's keep that theory from Mrs. Manning. What have you got there? Tobacco. It is. I'll get it down to the labs right away. I better show this to Mrs. Manning. Another note from your friend. Oh, Gil, this means he's safe. Five thousand pounds. Can we get it today? A minute, Gil. When you're ready to get that cash, we want to be in on it. Oh, it's no good handing over marked money. Uh, it's too obvious. Not marked. We can do things with the serial numbers. But we've got to keep track of those notes. I'm against any tricks, Mr. Logan. These men are probably desperate. But how can we... I understand, Mrs. Manning. But after you get your husband back, we want the kidnapper. But the letter asked me to send the police away. That's standard form in ransom notes. But if you play ball with them, you're bound to lose. He's right, Annette. I'd better get going. There's one thing more, Mrs. Manning. Five thousand is a lot of money. Not for my husband's life. No, I didn't mean that. There's always the possibility of a trick. If that happens, they may ask for a second 5,000 or even more. I'll have to take that chance. There's no other way. Oh, there is one. Put in that ad. Say the money is ready. But ask to see the goods before you pay off. Yes, I... I suppose you're right. There's a girl out here, Mr. Logan, who says she saw Dr. Manning that night he disappeared. 
She may be another of those crazy people, but you never know. We'll soon find out. Sure in. You come this way, please, miss. Hello. How do you do? I'm Mrs. Manning. This is Mr. Logan. Hi. Vera's my name. That's what everybody calls me. Just Vera. You say you saw my husband. That's right. Oh, but it wasn't anything like what you're thinking, if that is what you're thinking. I only saw him. I mean, I'm pretty sure. How long ago is that? The first night. The night the paper said it happened. It took long enough getting here, didn't you? Cops. They're all alike. You are a cop, aren't you? Always questions. Did you ever see one that didn't want to know everything? Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Please go on. Well, first of all, I didn't think too much about it. Then I said to myself, what if it happened to my husband? If I had one, that is. I'm still single. But just the same, a girl's got her dreams. If you could just tell us what you saw. Look, I came here to help. Let her tell it in her own way. Thanks, dearie. Well, so after I thought it over for a while, I figured I'd better come down here. All those cops outside, they give a person the willies. And when you want one, they're never around. Am I right? Only who wants one? Mind if I smoke? Well, it's about 3.30 a.m. and I'm walking down the street. Alone? I said I was single, didn't I? It gets kind of lonesome that late and I was hurrying home. I've got this little dog. Oh, he's just a little Pekingese. Puddles, that's his name. And all of a sudden I hear a yell. Just a quick one and it stops. Well, I'm scared, so I duck around a corner and I see these two guys, I mean these two gentlemen, coming out of a door down the alleyway. One was kind of pushing the other. And a couple of seconds later, they get in a car and they're whizzing past me. Did you get a good look at them? They were men, weren't they? I mean, sure, I got a look at the one that wasn't driving. His head was kind of nodding like he was half asleep or something. Just a couple of drunks, I thought then. You know how it is that time of night? And then I see the doctor's picture in the paper next day, and it's him all right. The one that wasn't driving, I mean. Could you find this alleyway again? Do you remember exactly where it is? I do. It's where I always take puddles to... Oh, I beg your pardon. Sure, I remember it. Just a moment, sir. We're going over there. Sergeant. Get a couple of boys in the car and meet me out back. Tell Inspector Brown I'll pick him up. Oh, and say, take it easy. You don't want the papers in on this one. Thank you, dear. We appreciate that. You want me to stick around? No, that's all, thanks. Maybe you better take my phone number, just in case any of you boys might need me again. Well, if we need you, Vera, we know where to find you. Hey, sweetheart. Hello. How's about a cup of coffee? Come on, dear. Well, that's all we've got to show for the moment. Not much, is it? G-E-M. Well, that's his all right. Maybe he sat there and could have got slugged from behind. Hold on, Nick. This may be something. Oh, look at this. Looks like the fellow was having a smoke while waiting for Manny. Sure. Well, the lab boys can have a go at this. Maybe it matches up to the tobacco we got out of the ransom note. Hey, here's something. What's that? Jimmy his way in here and unlock the door. Yeah. Met the doctor at the street door, brought him in here, stunned him, and dragged him out of the car. Here. Here it is. There's the Jimmy. Yeah, that's it, all right. Maybe it's got some fingerprints on it. Maybe it's a break. We got one coming. Let's go around and pick it up, huh? I'm a 
afraid we are out of luck, Inspector. Not a thing on it. He must have worn gloves. This guy took no chances. Uh, we found a lot of perspiration uh, in the handle. Now, unless he stole it, your man's obviously a building worker of some kind. That narrows it down a lot, doesn't it? Yes, come over there. A few things which might help you, of course, you mustn't expect miracles. Well, these are the tobacco samples, are they? Yes, you find they are matching, all right. What sort? Pipe tobacco. Not a regular commercial brand, just a cheap mixture which has been specially made up. Well, give me a report, Crashold, and I'll check the shops. Right. Oh, just one more thing. Mm. Judging by the strength of it, this man must do a lot of smoking out of doors. Nobody, at least nobody's wife, would stand for it inside. Oh, well, we're really moving along, aren't we? So far, we have a pipe smoker who does construction work. Or maybe a constructive smoker who fools around with pipes. <laughs> <laughs> Call for you, Mr. Logan. Excuse me. Thank you. Hello. Yes, Gil. Which bank? Okay, we'll be right over. Better check it, Inspector. Thanks. Second letter J, fourth number three, right. Well, there's another couple of hundred. Well, that's uh, 3,500 in matching notes so far. Oh. <laughs> you can take your time with that money, Joe. We're not going to be hearing from our friend for a while, not until this cools off. Take a look at that. I've done all I could. An ad in the papers every day for a week and nothing. Newspaper story must have scared him off. 5,000 pounds can cure a man of that. Hasn't so far. An express letter, Mrs. Manning. This is the one. I won't let this upset you, Mrs. Manning. You can't play it their way. No. I'll play it my own way. I've just had a letter from the kidnappers. Unless I handle everything from now on alone, my husband's life's in danger. I must ask you all to leave immediately. Oh, but Mrs. Manning... That's all I have to say. Please go. Come along now, please. You heard what the lady said. You heard that, I suppose. Then I don't have to repeat myself, Inspector. Look, Mrs. Manning, we've just begun to build a picture of a man. Right now, it's pretty fuzzy, I admit that. But unless we go through with it... I'm not interested in that man, Inspector. I'm interested in my husband. If we let these men get away with it, it could start a whole flurry of kidnapping. Other people would become involved, other lives. Now, you can do a lot to prevent that. I want my husband back. Someone else can save the country. Yes? Hello, Nick. Be right with you. Monitor room. They're listening in to Mrs. Manning's phone calls. Hmm? Yes, I got all that. All right, thank you. Well, there's not many calls down there tonight. She put one through to her lawyer. He's on his way there now. Not a word from the kidnapper. Rancher has the first list on the tobacco shops that make up that blend. The 20 in all. About 12 of them are in the one area, Camden Town. Hmm. Might give us a lead as to where our man lives. Brown here. Oh, yes, Slattery. Hmm? Yes. All right, call me the moment that anything happens, will you? Thank you. Slattery's at the post office. No luck, huh? You know, Nick... I think we'd better get down to the Manning household. I don't think there's going to be any welcome mat out there for us. Well, we won't try to get into the house. We'll be in the truck. All right. Is 
Sergeant. Any activity? Not much tonight, sir. A lawyer called about 20 minutes ago, that's all. You know, Mick, I used to read the detectives' lives are exciting. Ah, that's private eyes. And only in books. Hey, look, sir. I was told to give you this, and I've got to wait. All right, you, you'd better come in then. Who is it? It's for you, madam. He says he's to wait. Money to main entrance gates. Come alone. Husband safe, but no tricks, I warn you. Annette, why don't we call the police? No, no, let's go. Come on. All right. Welcome, Cemetery. as you ask me. Go over to that bench. Sit down. Don't turn around. The money. You have the money? Yes, I got the money. But I can't give it to you until I'm sure about my husband. It's in the cab. Is this a trick? You're trying to cheat me? No, I'm not trying to cheat you. But I've got to have evidence, some proof. I'll give you proof. Come over here. 
Don't turn round. Is he here? First, the money. May I see him? We talked to him. Later. But no tricks, or you'll not see him again. I'll go and get the money. She's been gone five minutes. the money now, girl. Well, have you seen him? Are you sure you don't want me? Just wait. Just wait. Where are your squad cars? They ought to be here any minute. Car X234, in position. Car X531, in position. That's two of them. Hey, look! Oh, oh. Pleased to meet you, baby. Is the mayor down, girl? Playing hard to get, eh? That's what I like. Oh. <laughs> Please let me sure go. is lucky we two came along. Sure is She wants to go with the boyfriend. <laughs> the other cars will be too late. I'm going after her. Money, I'll do anything. All right. Go to Freddy's Cafe in the High Street now. But alone. Alone if you want the doctor to live. You understand? Yes. Yes. There'll be a letter there telling you what to do. Look, can't you... What did he look like? Uh, he got mate. About five foot nine. Had his hat pulled over his face. Couldn't see much. He was smoking a pipe. Didn't you see his face? Well, it was dark and a slow night. I was more interested in his money. If I'd have known you was after him. Okay. You give me your name and address. And you can have this. You see, Governor, it was really dark. Yes, yes, I know. A slow night. You better get going. Who's that? Cab driver brought the note. You let him go. I got his name, address, and license number. <laughs> he can't help us much. Oh. So where have you been? Sitting in the truck, listening into a telephone conversation. Our friend again. He phoned Mrs. Manning from a public call box. Oh, he's getting real hungry. You know the place? You'll soon find out. It's called Freddy's Cafe. I've got to go out again. Why? What's happened? I'll tell you on the way. Gazelle Post! Yes, son? We want Gazelle Post. There's a half a crown for you. What for, Governor? Just take this letter across to Freddy's Cafe. Say a lady will pick it up. That's all. Half a crown? Easy money. Hey, Freddy. The man asked me to leave this here. Cut the tin sausage roll, Freddy. 
you that ain't for you. Some woman's coming for it. Where did you get this letter, Charlie? The man down the street. I got my sausage roll. Listen, this Dr. Manning will be out. It's the kidnapper. Where was he? Just down the street. I've got to tell the wife. Mari, there's a letter come from the kidnapper. The Manning kidnapper. I tell you it's true. I've got the letter here in my hand. If you don't believe me, come down. Here, read it. The man in kidnapping? Is it really the kidnapper? It says right here, 5,000. A letter like this comes to Freddy's, and Mari doesn't believe it when I tell her. I'm Mrs. Manning. I believe you have a letter for me. Look, ma'am, Charlie comes in here with this letter, only you don't say who it's for. So I read it and tell a couple of people. You'll be ashamed reading other people's letters. Here's your letter. Thank you. Will you please listen to me? You all know what's in this letter. I can't help that now. But you must also know that this has placed my husband's life in great danger. If anything happens to him, you will all share the responsibility. Therefore, I must ask you all to stay away from Avondale Park tonight. You heard what the lady said. Now let's all break it up, shall we? seems against me. First those horrible drunks in that awful cafe. And that man reading my letter in front of all those people. Yes, that scared him away. It's a terrible thing. When you think of all the millions of people in this country, how can we appeal directly to him? Millions of people? That gives me an idea. Maybe it'll work. Hello, television service. Extension 126, please. Hello, Bob. Uh, Gil Stevens here. Yeah, fine, thanks. But, Bob, I want a favor. A great favor. And you're the one man who can do it for me. Ladies and gentlemen, the Manning case. Now, the kidnapping of Dr. George Manning has shocked the whole country. And tonight, in the studio, we have Mrs. Manning. Now, Mrs. Manning, I want you to know that all our sympathy and that of the viewers is with you. But please tell me, when did you first realize that your husband had been kidnapped? Well, it was the day that the note was delivered to the house. Now, this note, did it have any indication as to who brought it? No. Only a mark in the bottom corner like this. I see. Now, Mrs. Manning, do you remember what was in the note? I shall never forget it. Whoever you are, please send my husband back to me. I don't mind what I pay. I'll pay it. There, I'm now, Mrs. sorry, Manning. I didn't mean to do that. It's quite all right, Mrs. Manning. Don't Please worry about it at all. Me. Please don't worry about it at all. Nick, have a look at that. Mrs. Manning's on television tonight. She must be crazy. Sure she is. I bet this was Gil's idea. Mrs. Manning, don't turn around. Now drive. What are you two doing here? Oh, we might ask the same thing of you. Where's Mrs. Manning? She's getting the car out. Oh? What make of car is she driving? A blue Renault. Wasn't that a Renault that just raced out of here? 
It can't be. She's picking me up. It's a runner, all right. Hey, Come on. Boy. I met in the cemetery. You saw his face? No. He had the gun stuck in my back. I couldn't turn around. Well, what did he say? I can't tell you. Mrs. Manning, if we are to help you... Help me? All you've done up to now is to hinder me. Oh, will you please let me handle it my own way? But that way you won't get your husband back now. You've agreed to another place for paying over the ransom. Yes, what if we did? I can't tell you. But Mrs. Manning... If you agreed to his terms, why did you crash the car? I got panicky. He threatened to kill me. I couldn't stand it any longer. Okay. Okay. We'll play it your way. Maybe it'll work out. All you want to do is to catch another criminal. Just a moment. Maybe you have caught him already. Yes, it's mine, all right. How much do you sell? A couple of pounds a day, maybe more. Mostly to the same people? More or less. See, it's my own blend, I'll push it to the casuals, too. That's kind of a rough question. But do you have any bricklayers or construction workers among your regulars? Well, they don't tell me their large stories, you know. So you can't remember anybody coming in here with rough hands like a bricklayer or a navvy? Honestly, I can't. I look at the money, not at their hands. Okay. Thanks, Wally. What for? Nothing, really. But if anybody does come in here and asks for your blend, just keep him talking, will you? If he's a laboring type. And then call this number. What are you looking for, a spy? No, he's not a spy, but he's plenty dangerous. Oh, uh, conductor. Yes. Listen, sometime before we get to Hereford, I'm going to be pulling the communication cord. Uh, well, I've got you five pounds. 
Besides, it's illegal. In the last carriage but one, you'll find Inspector Brown of Scotland Yard who'll make it quite legal. Do you say so, sir? I say so. Now keep this to yourself. About the police, I mean. Yes, sir. Man's life may depend upon it. Well, sir. Conductor? Oh, nothing, madam. Just a couple of kids playing about with the communication cord. We'll be underway in a minute. Around here? Nobody around here, mate. Chap getting a briefcase? No, I ain't seen a soul. Mind if I take a look inside? Have a look in the van if you want. Come on, masters. Have a look in there. Caught anything? Oh, that looks pretty good. Can't speak, mister. He's dumb. Oh. Well, uh, have you seen any strangers around here? No. Any luck? Nothing in here, sir. How about those guys around the fire? They're all right, sir. No briefcase there. <laughs> well, we better be moving. Gonna get dark soon. We'll never find him then. Did I do all right, mister? You did fine, son. Thanks, mister. Hey, Mike. What do you want? Come over here. I will not catch anything here. You should have gone further up there. Up by the bridge. What are you talking about? I've got one already. Look, two pounds if it weighs an ounce. Aye. If that's a two-pounder, then I'm a mackerel. All right, if you don't believe me, go back to the car and get the scales. I will! Joe! Joe! What is it? Come here! did it happen? The doctor was killed just a few hours after the kidnapping. Then all those messages, notes, just for the money. Oh, cruelty. Yes. The world is full of cruelty. Perhaps you'll think me cruel, too. But I want you to go on. Go on? What's there to go on for? killed him is still at large. The only chance we have of getting him is through you. Through me? Through me? You met him twice. In the cemetery and in the car. Now we have a lot more evidence than at the start. We built a pretty close picture of what he's like. Without you, we can't do it. But I didn't see his face. I wouldn't know him again if I saw him. What, know him? 
Of course I know him. I could pick him out from a thousand. And that's a tall order, sweetheart. Look, Fred, when you've seen a man once, and that's how often I see most of them, I never forget him. Say, Vera, how would you like to have your picture in the papers? Ooh, I'd like that. Front page. Well, I can't promise, but it'll be quite a splash. <laughs> That's right, Inspector. The girl's name is Vera Clark. Yes, she lives in your division, Copeland Street. Now, look, I want her taken into protective custody. All at once, please. The girl's life may depend on it. Thank you, Inspector. That girl's just asking for trouble. Well, let's hope that trouble doesn't get to her first. You've got a cheek saying you could pick him out of a thousand. Could you? Don't be silly. Of course I couldn't. But it got me a picture in the paper, didn't it? Maybe somebody will discover me. Yeah, on a marble slab. She could recognize him. That was the quickest way of committing suicide. Are there no clues, no lead? No, he hasn't started spending that money. He's playing at KG. Well, maybe he's left the country. No. Inspector's seen to that. Your airport harbor is covered. If he just lies low, it may take ages. I don't think so. Maybe there's somebody else on his list. On his list? There were two people who've been real close to him. One of them is dead. I'm sorry, Annette, but I've asked the inspector to put the guards back on the house. You mustn't go out alone. Now, will you promise? But how can I? It may take weeks or months. It won't, you see. Dr. Manning was struck by two blows. This one would have stunned him. It was probably struck in the room to which he was lured that night. This one. The one that killed him at the spot where the body was found. From the slant of the blows and their positions on the skull, I'd say the murder was about five feet ten. He hit him with something pretty heavy. A rock, maybe? A hammer or a short-handled pick. I'd say that's more than a guess. We found some evidence. Those are some particles of mortar dust, which we found in the wounds. They must have come from the murder weapon. Hmm. That widens the field a bit. Maybe in demolition. That's what we thought. Perhaps the demolition worker Semmer. Could be. Anything else? Yes, one or two more bits over here. With regard to the other victim, those are some hairs found clutched in the girl's hand. The murderer has sandy hair with streaks of grey. Here are some more of the same hairs in the solution of caustic potash. 
On the length of time it takes the hair roots to dissolve, we can tell a person's age. The murderer is about 46. And here's something else. Fibers from a jacket found in Dr. Manning's clothing. At the time of the murder, your man wore a cheap, rather old blue serge suit. Chances are he's still wearing it. He hasn't been splashing that money around. Yeah. Paul just came in, sir. I think he's passed one of the notes. Where? Same place the newsboy took the letter to. Freddy's. Thanks, Pancho. That's it. Tell you how it happened. Last night when I close, I'm counting the money in the till. A good day, I count. Bad day, I lock up and go upstairs. But last like night... Like you said, it was a good day. Wish I had a hundred of them. I put the notes in a pile and I see the list the police send around. I check it, and what do you think? This. Do you know who gave it to you? Well, I remember it about this time of day, but... Uh, what about the guy? Do you know him? First time he's been in here. A second time, day before last, about the same time. Would this description fit him? Aged 46, about 5 foot 10, sandy hair, strong build? Nah, little fellow with glasses. He had a sharp nose and a... Talk about the devil. Look over there. Oh, you certainly had me worried, Inspector. For a moment you had me thinking things. Not that I answer to the description, do I? <laughs> Perhaps it's just as well. I don't want to run foul of the law. How do you figure you got hold of this note? I can't say. But if that's the one I gave to Freddy last night, it must have come from my last customer before closing up. Drove up like the blue horse that he did. Thought five gallon. Would you know him again if you saw him? No, I can't say I would, Governor. You see, I'd left me glasses in the office. No, I can't say I'd know him again, except for his rough tongue. Well, what did he say? Oh, I told him one of his tires wanted a retread. He just snarled at me. Mind your own business, he said. <laughs> he was a surly one, all right. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Simmons. Let us know at once if he comes in again, will you? We want his license number. Yes, I'll do that, sir. And I'll tell the boss as well. Well, good day, gentlemen. Well, first lead, Burton's Garage, Camden Town. Let's see where he goes from there. Well, he's beginning to travel a bit. Two beers and a sandwich there last Sunday. Sunday, yeah. Yet for the rest of the working week, he stuck pretty close to Camden Town. Where he obviously lives or works. It's been ten days now since I've been cooped up here and I can't stand it any longer. There's no objection to you taking a walk. Yes, I know. If nurse comes along. It won't be long now, Annette. That's what you said last week. Yes, but none of the banknotes have turned up in the last three days. How does that help you? Well, the last one we picked up is at a cinema. The cashier was a bright girl. Now that he knows the money is hot, we figure he may try and leave the country. So please, Annette, just a little more patience, please. Let's go, Inspector. Give me an ounce here, special. Three and eleven. Pound it. I'm sorry, I haven't got any change. I shall have to keep you waiting a minute while I get some more from the safe. Don't be all day. Nice weather we're having. Yeah? Hmm, reminds me of France in 1915. So that's Scotland Yard. Inspector Brown's office quickly, it's urgent. Is that Inspector Brown? Not there. Is that Mr. Logan speaking? Now listen. Okay. Keep him there if you can. If you can't, try and get his address. We'll be right over. What? Well, tell him anything. But try and keep him there. That was the tobacconist. Our man has just cashed one of the notes. My car's outside. Come on. Where is he? Sorry, Mr. Logan. He left here about ten minutes ago. I couldn't hold him. Would you get his address? I didn't get the chance. 
I asked Herbert to keep him talking while I got you on the phone. When I came back, he'd gone. So had Herbert. Do you think he may have followed him? I should think it's highly probable. Especially as Herbert fancies himself as a b split. Split? What's that? Detective. Herbert, any luck? Well, give it to his man, quick. He's there now. Where, man? Where? Up in Mendoza Street. He has a room at number 12. Mendoza Street, come on. You'll catch him if you hurry. Number 12. Nothing there. Just got to be. It's got to be. Or maybe he took it with him. Five thousand pounds in notes. Oh, could have. Let's get some air. Ouch. Watch it, Brown. No <laughs> bridge. So much law here and there. by a car driven by Dr. George Manning, the Harley Street doctor. I remember this case, Nick, six years ago. Woman walked straight into the car. Could be the motive, all right. All we need is the guy. Grab that paper, we'll wrap this stuff up. Yeah. Hey, Nick. This could be useful. Hobson Demolition Company. Looks like one of the letters are missing here. Yeah, easily check on that. Robson, Hobson, Dobson. Yeah. What's that? I was just thinking. When we catch up with this guy, we may need a net for a positive identification. I'll get one of the boys to bring it over. What did Mr. Logan say, Sergeant? He wants you to meet him and the inspector straight away. Where? He doesn't know that yet. There's a patrol car waiting outside, and they'll hear by radio. Well, come on, let's go. to one of my men, do you, Inspector? What about? Well, I'll just one or two questions. He might answer for us. Does the name Carver mean anything to you? Nobody on my gang by that name. Well, this fellow lost his wife in an auto accident a few years back. Oh, did he? One of my chaps lost his sister that way. Pretty cut up about it, too. Yeah. Do you recognize this wage packet? Yeah, 216. That's him. Dan! No! You want it!
fella. This is the end of the line. Come and get me.